Today we're going to talk about the missing child, Dior Coons. We're going to talk about his parents and the body language and behavior we see with them. Greg, what else to tell us about the videos we're going to watch? Yeah, so Dior Coons Jr. went missing July 10th of 2015. That was a Friday. This interview with the parents was conducted on July 13th, the following Monday. Jessica Mitchell and Vernal Dior Coons Sr. are the parents. His great-grandfather and a friend, Isaac Rainwan were at the same location. The, the great-grandfather was watching the child at the time that the parents say that the child disappeared. They were named suspects in 2016 and never charged. And there are a ton of people tied up in this case. We're going to disappoint somebody, guaranteed. But this video and the behavior in this video is what we're going to cover. So take us back. Was it Friday? Yes. I'm not sure what day it is today. Today's yeah. Monday. It was Friday. It was Friday. Friday at about... 2, 2.26 is when I, was it 2.26? It was 2.36 when I called. Two, it was 2.36 is when she called and I was in the truck hauling down to the road to try and get service because I didn't think one bar would get it. So she got very, very lucky. I was blessed that she was able to get service because I didn't, th I didn't want to try and risk getting halfway through my talking to the 911 and have it cut off. So I went down to where I knew I could get a little service about a half mile down the road. Uh, we searched for after about 20 minutes and in a dead panic, not knowing where he was in such a small area and not knowing never being there, I knew I was in trouble. Uh, so we decided to call search and rescue uh, and that's when I drove down. She tried getting a signal out. Um, as soon as I got a hold of them, I come to, they told me that she was on the other line with them and they had our location and they were on our way. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is a really interesting one. We've looked at people whose child has been missing in the past. The McCanns come to, to mind immediately. And these are very different people, very different in their education level, very different in their delivery. But we also see relationship dynamics in both of these. In this case, if we watch him, he speaks first almost always as we go through this. And he has this kind of bold overtalk. Everything he says, as long as he's got data for it, he's going to overtalk and over deliver information. And I think what we're seeing is a baseline in who he is. We also will notice a couple of other things. When she has something to say, even if she doesn't say it, we'll see her raise her foot and her ankle. You'll see her move it because every time she does inject, that foot comes up when she's talking. So we can then pay attention. If I were interviewing these people, I would say, what do you have to say? Because I see that foot move. And I also watch just to see what he's doing that's different. Now, they're both barriered to all. I mean, she's got the child's blanket. He's got his hands together. His thumbs are up and he's moving his thumbs together. Joe Navarro says, if your hands are steepled and your fingers are together and your thumbs go up, you're showing confidence. In this case, it's more barriering. This is more, he's just using that to adapt. As he says, I went about a half mile down the road. You watch her go into that inner dialogue down left. And when we say inner dialogue, what we're not talking about is remembering what to say. What we're saying is that's conversation. If it's something I've remembered, I'm probably going to go somewhere else. So we'll ask a question like, what are <laughs> the lyrics to your favorite song? And as you try to do that, pay attention, your eyes are going to drift around in your head. And a lot of people, their eyes will go somewhere between their brow ridge and their cheekbone. But when we go down to our left, we're thinking about the impact of something, how we should respond. And she's got her hands and arms all wrapped up and she's adapting. So we're paying a lot of attention to that. Is there an is there some kind of a dialogue going on between them when he says he went a half mile down the road and she wants to do something, she moves her foot, and then you see a little bit of something happen in her face as she starts to look down left. Maybe there's something happened between them. There's a lot that goes on when a child goes missing. And then he goes into some emotional eye accessing. She does a confirming glance. I don't see anything that looks like deception here. I see something that looks like a guy spilling his guts, using information just right off. This is the first thing I say. I'd ask questions around those baseline changes in her, but we don't get to hear from her. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with you. This is a great opportunity. This one video here to observe some baseline. This couple's going through something that I think they've probably said a whole bunch of times, and they're telling a few known truths here. And that's what we mean when we say base, baseline. How does this person behave when I can kind of prove what they're saying? A known truth. So the woman here, her name's Jessica, kind of seems to defer to him and looks to him while the question is being asked for confirmation several times, despite knowing the facts more accurately than he does, according to this video. And his cadence is fast, but it's not hurried. 
And he makes a mistake in his pronouns at the end here. If you're paying attention to our other videos and you've got training through our other videos, you might have heard that. But it's common in truthful storytelling. He says, uh, they they said, search and rescue, they were on our way. And I think he's telling and quoting someone at the same time. I think that's what we're really seeing here. But it's a great observation uh, for baseline here in this clip. And we'll look for differences from this in the next few videos. Scott? All right. I think right out of the gate, everything looks as it should. Everything sounds as it should. He's a little bit overbearing. He talks a little bit loud, but that's okay. Because what we're seeing are, are two people under a tremendous amount of stress, a tremendous amount of stress. Um, if we don't see a whole lot of movement overall, that makes a lot of sense. There's not, there's not a whole lot of, of illustrating, which is fine at this point. Usually at the beginning, you'll see a whole lot of it because they're in a panic. They don't know what's happened, but now they've had a couple of days to think about what's happened and, and sort of come to terms with it as they continue to search for the child. We see him with a lot of, of eye contact, a lot of hard eye contact. Then he breaks eye contact, but that's okay. He should do that. That's totally normal. He's thinking. He's looking away to think. As he's thinking about stuff, he looks away. And that's fine. There'll be a lot of questions about what you're seeing here. And don't take the things you've read in in magazines and seen from experts who are aren't who aren't giving out valid information because you'll get the wrong information on that if you if you've gathered that up over the years. So so really be careful. You have to keep an open mind with this. He's using his head as an illustrator, and that's fine. And it's normal for some people that that's all you see is that head illustrator when they talk. And when we say illustrators, like I'm always talking about, that's when your brain is, is um, focusing on a specific word or phrase. So it does that like I did just then. Sometimes it's with their hands, sometimes with their heads, sometimes with their eyebrows. Uh, we see some adapting with his thumbs. So almost we call it twiddling his thumbs when we were little. And I think that's because he's not bored, but he's got all this information. He wants to get it out. He looks he looks like he wants things to move forward with everything that he's doing. He's showing things. He wants things to go forward. And he has a lot of information that he wants to get out. And so does she. His, vo his vocal tone is strong. His cadence is really fast. His cadence is how many words you speak in a sentence and how fast those come out. We, call, we refer to that as cadence. And um, he sounds clear and clean. You know, he's one of those guys that talks real loud. So he's got he's got a lot to say, and he does. And that's fine, because he's trying to get out all the information he possibly can to the TV, to whoever's watching, so they can maybe help him. I don't know how they can if they're across the country or whatever, but that's what usually happens. That's that's the road you go down. The mother looks the way, the way she should. She looks tired. She looks a little bit haggard. She's sleepy. Her arms are crossed. And, and in this situation... That, that means nothing. A lot of times you hear people say there's arms across, so they run into what I was saying, or they're turned off to the situation. They're barrier, barrier, barriering or blocking. It is kind of a barrier because she's kind of trying to soothe herself. She's pacifying herself. She's holding herself doing that. So it's, it's sort of a, a self-protective thing at that point. So there's, she's, I'm under the impression she's not hiding anything. Um, and it's, so it's okay to do that. It's okay to, to be doing those kind of things. So far, like I said before, everything looks as it should up to this point. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so let me point out some things that if you were trying to look for things not looking as they should, here's what you might go for. Uh, you might go for the fact that the, the male is locked down there, you know, and you might miss that there's self-soothing going on. Now, is that self-soothing because he's he's stressed because he's being deceptive or stressed because of he's lost his child? Is there enough stress for you thinking about it? You know, you think, wow, they've just lost, lost their child. Well, three days ago, a lot happens in three days. Uh, a lot of uh, adrenaline gets released that you can't get back again. So, um, but, you know, you might go, but he seems a bit locked down. She seems barriered, just as everybody's been saying. And maybe you might go, well, she seems to be hiding behind that blanket. Or you could say she's being comforted by that blanket, which we'll find out later on has a very deep significance um okay so why is his focus 
on these getting the right amount of bars? Why the focus on completing the call to police rather than doing the best you can in the moment? I think if you were looking for something to go, hang on, something going on here, you might go, why doesn't he just want to get on the phone and just get some kind of message through rather than complete the whole message? You could pick on that. He says, I was in trouble. You might go, well, why, why are you in trouble? You're not in trouble unless you're, you've done something wrong. So you could jump on that. You could jump on that he doesn't mention the, the name of the, the kid. At this point, we have she, we have they, we have he, we have other entities named. We also have the entity of, you know, we were blessed. So another entity from outside blessed us with some kind of good. And we often, you know, will say when somebody starts bringing in higher entities, that that can be an issue. So look, I just want to highlight what you could very easily jump on to go, I think there's something up there. I think at this point, though, the positives on their side outweigh any of those negatives at, at this point. And you might be already jumping to the wrong conclusion. But we're only one video in. Who knows? Who knows what we'll see uh, coming up? The eyewitness is you. So take us back. Was it Friday? Yes. I'm not sure what day it is today. Today's yeah. Monday. It was Friday. It was Friday. Friday at about 2... 226 is when I, was it 226? It was 236 when I called. Two, it was 236 is when she called and I was in the truck hauling down to the road to try and get service because I didn't think one bar would get it. So she got very, very lucky. I was blessed that she was able to get service because I didn't, th I didn't want to try and risk getting halfway through my talking to the 911 and have it cut off. So I went down to where I knew I can get a little service about a half mile down the road. Uh, we searched for after about 20 minutes and in a dead panic, not knowing where he was in such a small area and not knowing never being there, I knew I was in trouble. Uh, so we decided to call search and rescue uh, and that's when I drove down. She tried getting a signal out. Um, as soon as I got a hold of them, I come to, they told me that she was on the other line with them and they had our location and they were on our way. They. They were amazing. They are amazing and they still continue to be. Uh, Lima High County Sheriff and Sam in Search and Rescue, you could not ask for a better group of people, volunteers and Search and Rescue and just everybody. You couldn't ask for better people. So sincere, so concerned. And they were, everybody was so emotionally attached to this as you, anybody would be of a two-year-old. He's pretty small for his age, but he, he moves pretty good. And that was our concern. He, he uh, was right with us. Uh, where it's at is, I mean, I thought it would be perfect to go camp in there because it's enclosed by walls of mountains and there's not much space around there that he could go. And our biggest concern was the, the creek, which was knee, knee deep, few feet wide, but he's a little guy. Um, they finally, yesterday, we were able to put that to rest and Lima High County Sheriff, um, Sheriff Dave and the rest of the sheriffs have put out that there is, they assured me there is 100% no chance that he is not anywhere in that water, around that water. They have torn that creek upside down and in and out. Divers uh, have gone through wetsuits uh, along with the helicopter. That was the world's most advanced rest, search and rescue helicopter uh, volunteered out of Montana. And those guys were just amazing. The, accuracy they had with the night vision ability it has and the uh, heat range it can see. They were, what, the one guy, I can't remember his name, um, I've met so many people, so many good people, but um, he was, he, his, his own safety, he was, he was more or less, he was strapped in and he was on the side of that helicopter looking and I, he was looking down, I remember them telling me that they um, asked the search rescue to go look over because there was an orange insect repellent can they think by the bank and they were dead on that's what it was that's how accurate these guys are they thought it was it might have been like a part of a shoe they might, or, something, or something but they said go check that out all right chase what do you got yeah we'll start uh with this baseline his cadence continues in a quick uh but not hurried tone here the pacifying gestures are still continuing with his hands uh, in his lap here. And there's word repetition, and there's no use of the name again. 
couple of things that we often identify as as red flags when they are accompanied by a mountain of other things. Jessica continues to exhibit these behaviors that indicate discomfort. This constant adjustment of the jacket or, uh, sorry, the blanket in her lap, the movement of her foot, and the confirmation glances around the whole room. And some people might think this is a cluster. I think about it in terms of generalized versus focal points of stress or discomfort. Is it generalized? Is it focal? But what we're seeing here is generalized discomfort. They aren't focal on a singular issue. And this might be the presence of tons of cameras that she's never maybe been on sitting in this in the backed into a corner of a conference room before. Uh, maybe a combination of that and the grief that they're maybe still going through here if they are innocent. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. Um, so Mail starts illustrating more now and, and opening up. I think that's that's in his his favor. Um, a lot of focus there on the insect repellent can, you know, some details there. OK, why does he want to go for these details? Um, world's most advanced, accomplished, so many good people. So why is he why is he bringing us to how good everybody else is and raising that status of of everybody else? Is it that he's trying to divert us uh, our attention or is it that he's genuinely placating and thanking people at, because he wants them to do even more work? You know, how much does he want people to be involved in stuff? Or how much does he want us to go, okay, look at this, all these people over here, and look at the detail that they picked up on. So I want you to weigh those up in your mind. There's the female there, very definitely comforting with that with that blanket that almost looks at the moment like she's holding a child. So is it that she's mimicking the holding of a child there? Or is it that she's using that as a barrier to so we can't see some of the anxious behaviors that could be going on because you know it all depends on what mindset we've joined this at if we've got a mindset that says hey uh the parents are most likely guilty which would be a accurate i mean that statistically you you're already on the right lines but you got to work out how much is that going to um uh, distort to a certain extent what you view these behaviors as so always check yourself and your bias before you enter into this um uh she checks the mail during the interview is that threat checking i mean depends on your bias or is it is it checking he's got it right you know is she not joining in is she not joining in because she sees him as a threat or not joining in because he's doing a great a great job and and he wants him to continue again it might depend on your bias as to which way you go on that look at her red face look at her red face um is that the red face of sunburn because she's been out so much looking is that the red face of extreme stress she's broken out in hives across her face because she's so stressed out about her son being missing or is it the red face of somebody who is guilty and has broken out in well it kind of all depends on your bias around here <laughs> my bias personally at the moment from all that i'm seeing is already leaning towards this is the usual behavior that we should see from somebody who a couple who are looking after their uh, their kid and and are worried about them and they're not involved in any anything nefarious but i'm i'm open my mind could be changed on this greg what do you got yeah, Mark, I think when we talk about bias, let's talk about one of the most famous cases of a missing child in history, Lindy Chamberlain, who had her child taken by dingoes. And nobody believed her because her affect was off. And lots of folks at the time said something's wrong with her and she was there. Let's talk about baselining a person because you can't look at Lindy Chamberlain. You can't look at these people like you look at me or like you look at Chase. We have to pay attention to the person and what they're doing. And people make themselves comfortable with data uh, if you've ever watched Dan Aykroyd, who I think is just phenomenal as a comedian and, you know, in roles, he does this guy over and over and over in many cases, that forceful voice with lots of information and too much when he's telling you. He does that all the time. This guy is almost a caricature because he does. He leans on data. The more data he gives you, the more believed he is. Doesn't mean he's hiding something necessarily. But as we listen, anytime we hear him using data, he'll feel comfortable. He'll not adapt. He'll not do a lot of those things. He'll not stammer or stutter. 
What we will see is change when he runs out of data. So it's interesting to watch that. It's also interesting to watch the human dynamic. Remember that humans put information in their head in certain ways. Some of us are really detailed. Some of us are more broad. I say people remember events in terms of time, event, or sequence. Time meaning details about when something happens. Events, big chunks. What did you do yesterday? And then sequence is just walk through the process. Chase and I might be more driven by clock because of our military background than most folks, but other folks will have a lot more detail than we will in some cases. As the dynamic of these people, he may always speak first and always speak over her, and then she waits for her chance to in interject. That would be my guess watching the way this thing goes, because we see that ankle. First of all, we see her react when, when the male says, small for his age. She does a distaste move, but then she pretty quickly moves back to nodding in confirmation when he said, but he's pretty quick mover. Her ankle comes up again when he said, I thought it would be safe with mountains on all side. That makes me wonder, was there a discussion about that when the kid disappeared? Because stressful things occur. They use a, they use the, the um, current tense, present tense, when they say he is a little guy. This same movement from her comes again when they're talking about the helicopter. And she does some mouth grooming there. And I wonder, what does she want to say? Hey, get to the point or something. But this guy's chaffing. We always say chaff and redirect. There's no redirect. If he was trying to hide something, he has every opportunity because they let him chaff and chaff and chaff, and he doesn't. Again, I agree with you, Mark. When he starts talking about the helicopter, his hands come up. Every time we see her speak, we're going to notice that foot starting to move. So it's a good baseline for us to run from. Scott, what do you got? I, I agree with that. And I think it's because she's a little bit nervous as well to add to that because of the situation she's in. Her arms are all crossed and her foot's doing that because like I think it was Chase saying earlier, she this is new for her. You know, she's she's uh, in a room in an interview and it's about her child who's missing. And it's a, we got to keep in mind there's a lot of stress going on here. This isn't a normal conversation that they're having with someone about anything. It's about a, their missing child. So that's why it's so different. So keep that in mind as we go through this, because I agree with you, Mark. This this is starting to it's it's leaning toward um, they look like they didn't do it. At, the, at this point. And like you said, Chase, the father is, is about the same. He hasn't, for the most part, his cadence hasn't changed. His diction is still great. His voice volume is still the same. You can understand everything he's saying. Um, they're going to be those people who say the mother looks suspicious, like, like we've all been saying. And that's because she keeps, as she's looking, she looks at the, at the interviewer and she'll look back at him, she'll look at the interviewer, look at her husband, and back and forth, almost like she's nervously looking, but she is nervously looking back and forth. She knows the information he's given. She's heard this before. I'm sure this isn't, isn't the first interview they've done, but as they've been talking to the police. They've been going through through different uh, versions. Of, they're trying to find out they're telling different versions of the story. And I don't believe they have been. Nothing in this thing changes as we go through this. Notice that the story stays the same. There are no no changes, no glitches, nothing like that. Um, and the mother's listening because she to, to to the father because she wants to make sure his information is correct. I believe, and he's saying the same things he's been saying, but she's just making sure that every that their story doesn't change, that everything is as it should be because she wants as much of the real information to get out as she possibly can because they're trying to find her kid. She's quiet, but when she does speak, she's strong and clear as well. Like I said before, he's a little bit, he sounds a little overbearing because he's so loud and he's so on. He's telling exactly what he thinks. And his illustrators don't get huge, like you guys were saying, until he starts talking about the helicopter. And that's fine too, because I believe he's confident with what he's saying. He probably doesn't use a lot of, a lot of illustrators. Uh, everything seems positive. There's nothing deceptive so far to me. I don't see anything like that. I think he feels a little bit of guilt when he says, I thought it would be perfect when he's talking about the, the camp and spot. Um, and then b because of the way he's, he doesn't shut down, but things change a little bit there. But I think he feels a, a little bit of guilt because of that. And again, it's really important to keep in mind, you may have heard hundreds of, of bits of information about, oh, this uh, when you do this, it means a lie every time. Or when, when they do this, it means that. It sounds like we do that, but we don't. Those are absolutes. Every time someone scratches their nose, they're not telling you the truth. Every time someone lifts one shoulder, they're not telling you the truth. We'll tell you four or five, nine different things that are going on when someone does a short one shoulder shrug. So keep in mind, there's so much more going on um, from this perspective, from our perspective that we're seeing that the normal armchair body language expert won't be seeing because that person may not be aware of all these other things these things could mean uh, up to this point. 
All right, we good? Yeah. All right. Okay, Chase. All right, thank you. Thanks. There you go. The eyewitness is you. They, they were amazing. They are amazing and they still continue to be. Uh, Lima High County Sheriff and Sam in Search and Rescue, you could not ask for a better group of people, volunteers and Search and Rescue and just everybody. You couldn't ask for better people. So sincere, so concerned. And they were, everybody was so emotionally attached to this as you, anybody would be of a two-year-old. He's pretty small for his age, but he, he moves pretty good. And that was our concern. He, he uh, was right with us. Uh, where it's at is, I mean, I thought it would be perfect to go camp in there because it's enclosed by walls of mountains and there's not much space around there that he could go. And our biggest concern was the, the creek, which was knee, knee deep, few feet wide, but he's a little guy. Um, they finally, yesterday, we were able to put that to rest and Lima High County Sheriff, um, Sheriff Dave and the rest of the sheriffs have put out that there is, they assured me there is 100% no chance that he is not anywhere in that water, around that water. They have torn that creek upside down and in and out. Divers uh, have gone through wetsuits along with the helicopter. That was the world's most advanced rest, search and rescue helicopter uh, volunteered out of Montana. And those guys were just amazing. The accuracy they had with the night vision ability it has and the uh, heat range it can see. They were, one, the one guy, I can't remember his name. Um, I've met so many people, so many good people, but um, he was, he, his, his own safety, he was, he was more or less, he was strapped in and he was on the side of that helicopter looking. And I, he was looking down, I remember them telling me that they um, asked the search rescue to go look over because there was an orange insect repellent can, they think, by the bank, and they were dead on. That's what it was. That's how accurate these guys are. They thought it was. It might have been like a part of a shoe they might, or, something, or something, but they said go check that out. The hearsay of things has kind of gotten way out of hand. The search is so far is, has been put on that has been suspended, and that is not entirely sure or true. Sheriff Dave of Lima High County. I just spoke with him on the phone this morning. He has got uh, horseback riders and trackers up there right now uh, and very, very advanced professional. Um, I'll, be, I'll be going up um, with, and I've just come down to get any resource I can get to go back right up, back up today. Um, what questions did you guys have? All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'll be short on this one for sure. His hands are open. He's illustrating as he talks about the search. Love that. She, they all make eye contact with somebody who comes in the room. So there's a lot of disturbance going on around here. If you pay attention to him now, he's telling, 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 but he's also not spewing data. I think his comfort is when he has enough data to be able to sound credible. And when he doesn't, then he starts to stammer a little bit. This is not about, he's just telling you what he thinks. So you hear a change in cadence. I don't think that means anything. And you hear him change tone at the end. What questions do you have? All this stuff looks like congruent messaging to me. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I would agree. Look, he's he's squeezing the melon on that one because he's he really wants to control the hearsay on it. There's there's the, and he's been asked to do that. You know, tell us about the hearsay. Okay, let me control this now. So that is very very congruent. I would say. Um, there's there's a sense of the of the loss of energy in that at the end he's dejected by the end of that but we don't hear his hands collapse onto his knees and make any kind of noise if i heard a noise at the end of that i might go hang on why why so dejected that you make that noise at the end why that loss at the end but it seems congruent for me like he's doing his best to 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 control this thing at the same time he's got a missing child um uh what questions 
do you guys have? Now, often we might say, oh, he's, he's searching searching for information now, wants to know what, what they have. But again, that would already be in a cluster of all kinds of other behaviors that we're seeing that's leading us down this road to go, hang on, there's chaff and redirect going on. There's loss of fluency around these things. And now you're searching for what the interrogator might have. No, he just gave that lost gesture. He's like, get you know get me to do some more whatever i need to do i'm going to do to 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 try and fill the gap just mm-hmm. give me a cue to fill the gap um and still the female com- literally using that blanket as a comforter uh now as a symbol of the child i would say behaviors that i think are all of this behaviors that i would expect to see from people who are who are looking for their child uh but again i'm always open uh, chase what do you got on this one one thing we are starting to see here is a continuous push to instill hope in people who are watching this show it's not about their story so and so far we're not seeing a lot of hallmarks of what i would expect to see in a guilty party and keep in mind that if someone uses a checklist to really determine with certainty that someone is guilty they're an idiot But checklists still can be very helpful to tell you where to direct attention. So here's really quickly the five points that I look for when I'm observing a video remotely similar to this. Uh, With their concern, uh, stress, information, emotion, and outlook. Those five things. Where's their concern, stress, information, emotion, outlook? So are they concerned with their story or locating the missing person? All right. Is the stress around their story or the missing person? Is the information vague or specific? Is the uh, emotion shame or guilt or sadness and desperation? Because those are very different and they look very different. And finally, the outlook. Are they introducing complexity or encouraging assistance? And we're seeing them pretty good, about five for five here uh, on all these points. Scott? All right. This is the most movement we movement we've seen from him so far. And when he's looking at the interviewer, he's making sure he's being believed, you know, and making sure that he's and by that. I mean, not making sure he's being believed, but he's making sure that his information is coming across clear that the guy gets and understands, understands what he's talking about. And he's just relaying the information he's aware of. Then his hands go up and they hold that position. And this lets us know that that information is so important to him. He's so focused on that. He forgets his hand is staying there. It sort of like sticks there in the air. And that's that's not uncommon. That'll happen when somebody's telling you something really important. They'll leave that hand up as they keep as they'll they're telling you something else they may not illustrate, but they'll be telling you something else as that's happening because they're so focused on what they're talking about, and making sure you get the correct information or making sure they see what's happening or, or depending on what they're watching. So I think that's that's a important to keep in mind there he's so focused on what he's doing what he's talking about he's really not aware of what the rest of his body's doing in a big way um some of the, some, like we were talking about some people see there at the end where he said what questions did you have they're going to see that as a red flag because he stumbles try to stay unbiased during this because what we usually see are and are two parents and they know what's happened or at least one of them knows what's happened to the child and they know that child isn't coming back. And we, we see behavior that's completely different than this. We don't see them hanging on to each other. We don't see them that those hard checks looking at each other while they're talking and the other and connecting like that, and making sure everything is the same. Or making sure that that spouse believes them as well as this other person, since the spouse may not know what's happened to him yet. So it's real important to keep that in mind as we go. Y'all have covered everything else. So I've really got um, nothing else put in all right we good yeah yep. all right <laughs> the eyewitness is you the hearsay of things has kind of gotten way out of hand the search is so far is, has been put on that has been suspended and that is not entirely sure or true sheriff dave of lima high county i just spoke with him on the phone this morning he has got uh, horseback riders and trackers up there right now uh, and very, very advanced professional. Um, I'll, be, I'll be going up um, with, and I've just come down to get any resource I can get to go back right up back up today. Um, what questions did you guys have? Tell me 
tell us a little bit about, first of all, how are you guys holding up? I know everybody's, a lot of people are praying for you. They're concerned. Friends about and pretty, family and hoping to be strong for him. The support around us is what I know keeping me together because if we didn't have all of our family, the minute I called my mom and she was up there in a matter of hours and same with the rest of our family, they were just up there Those that around us. Now, luckily, we I, a few phone calls is all it took at first, and we had just as Sheriff Davis said in the news, there was 175 plus people up there in the grid searches, volunteers, uh, professionals, and anybody I called. There's the service up there is very here here there. It's camping, you know. Um, we're we're trying to hold up the best we can, but with and we have hope yeah. is the thing. Hope is what keeps it going. Hope is because the search is not over. Search is not done. We will find him yeah, no matter what. You were, you were. All right, Chase, what do you got? This is the guy like you at a party and you just mentioned Home Depot one time and then like 45 minutes later, he's like, and then in November, you go in there and they've got a 20% off coupon. So you can get the same saw and the same lumber and really get that thing built out the exact way that you want it to go. You can take that out. You can totally edit that out. No, no it's true. Yeah, I'll take it out. Totally true. All right. So there's a few things unfolding here, I think, that are very important to understanding the behavior here. So keep in mind, we're not the forensics panel, and we're not experts on this case. If you've been studying this case a while, educate us down in the comments and let us know what you think. But the some key points here. There's no need in them to display emotional reactions and sadness for the cameras. They're not doing that. We're not seeing that. The only behavior that's on display here is, is his level of personal organization, which I think is just his personality. I do not think he's an organized person, and I do think that's a display. Jessica has no need to make these claims about how stressed or sad they are. They called their family and police immediately and openly discuss it and talk about it, which is another green flag, if we can say that. Finally, Jessica's mouth stays open after she speaks and after her statements. This is one of the small but very reliable things that I look for when I'm watching anything like this. And this is an indicator the statements are genuine to me. One caveat, while the, the statements I'm seeing here I think are genuine. Keep in mind that no hard or direct questions about guilt or involvement have been asked yet. So with that said, in most cases of guilty parties, you'll see them redirect the situation to their story, no matter what the interviewer says. So even with these questions, you're still more likely to see them redirect it to their suffering, their innocence, and how they did everything right. And we're not seeing it. Scott? I agree with you. And who's the girl who, uh, the woman who murdered uh, the the child and left him in a hotel room in a bag? That's the Teresa Balboa. Example. Teresa Balboa. That's the perfect yeah. example of what you're talking about, Chase. Yep. Let's go back and watch watch that episode that we did because that what you're talking about there. That's exactly what happened there. All right. Now he seems like he's taking over the conversation for his wife, and he seems like he's talking over and stuff. He is. That's the kind of guy he is. That's who he is. In that relationship, he's the talker. He's the one, she's, she may not be shy, but she sure seems shy here. And he's the one that talks all the time because he's really loud and he's really the guy that takes charge of stuff in that relationship. So that's totally fine. But again, when she talks, she's, she makes her, her point and she talks loud and she and strong and she makes valid points. So that's probably why they get along. He's a little bit louder than she is, but they get along. They seem like a, the, the perfect couple for that, for that yin and yang or yin yang, how you say it. So there's been no change in the story, no odd behavior, no strange wording uh, of the situation itself. Everything is flowing the way it should. He's what we call a loping, where you're just kind of on a horse, where you're kind of loping along and just telling the story and the facts are coming out and he's just going, out. there's no hardcore stopping, thinking, talking, moving things around, making sure your story is correct. We're not seeing any of that. We're just seeing him loping along, both of them, just talking and telling what they think and tell what they, th they think the situation looks like and wondering how they can help. Again, some people are gonna look at that mother and think something's wrong, but I'm not seeing any deception on her whatsoever. Nothing at all. Everything looks to me the way it should at this point. All right. Um, is that all of us? No. 
Oh, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> Both of us. You're the only two. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. But I'm so used to going last. I'm so used really, to going last. It's like, dang. What? Really quick. At the time of filming, this was, they were engaged. They never did get married. Right. They just lived together. Yeah. You, you can still call them a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So, um, look, to this point of, you know, they look like they're together. I, I don't know what their relationship is now, but you may have information and you might go, oh, but they're not together. So that is any couple after the loss of a child that stay together is an absolute miracle. It's an anomaly of the statistics. Losing a child as a as a general a good generalization that I will win at the casino every time will break up most every couple most every couple so um they are well he is for sure super positive about this we will find him no matter what and then there's just some slight bitterness in the mouth there and you might go oh the bitterness okay there's there's some deception going on no it's the no matter what pay attention to that we will find him no matter what there is some doubt in there or worry in there as to the condition of of the child if the child is to be found so positive at the same time some deep worry there super positive the the female there about the family you know we called him up and they were here he's been very positive about the amount of people there if you've committed a crime the last thing you want is a lot of people because just the child that, that amount of processing power the chances that somebody will find something on our earth and earth something that puts you in the frame just go higher and you know that the last thing you want is family around because family know each other really really well and family are going to go hang on though that's not right hang on i know you too well so the last thing you want is family and lots of people your chances of getting caught go up they're inviting family they're inviting we had one perpetrator i can't remember the guy's name but he was like no 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 don't yeah you know, no point in coming here you won't be able to find anything it's so difficult in this area i told the family not to show up just no point no point yeah exactly so um so it's 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 looking like people who want other people around that's not usual for people who've committed uh, a crime and and a great deal of positivity even though there's that bitterness at the end uh, greg what do you got on this one yeah, a handful of things, and it's all behavior, very little body language. A couple of things, Mark, you just pointed out. This guy is inviting lots of scrutiny. We also, Chase, you pointed out early, he is detail, 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 detail oriented. And so when we think about guilty people versus innocent people, I call it steering versus clearing. If I'm trying to find my kid, I want all the help in the world to find my kid. That's steering. If I want you not to think it was me, that's clearing. A guy with this level of detail is going to give you a hell of a lot of reasons why it's not him when he goes to clear. And this guy's not doing it. He's using all of his details to tell you about how people are looking and what's going on. He doesn't redirect. He's online every time. So it, it's a good stay on point, stay on story, deliver what you're after. That's number one. The other thing that's interesting to me is he walks down the path where he immediately blasts out quicker than her I, you know we call it overbearing there's no eye contact with her whatsoever he just starts talking but it's possible entirely possible that that's intentional to keep her from being lambasted with questions of that don't know we don't know enough about the relationship i would assume that he's you know the one who's a talker as you say scott but it's also possible that he is trying to protect her and the reason i say that is because once he starts to broadcast what he thinks and she joins in he stops and makes hard eye contact and watches her and supports her response with shaking head, no adapting, and then gives more details about the search. So I think if we were looking at this guy and he were trying to get out of it, he would not let her talk at all. And he would try to drive as many points in his favor as he possibly could. And we would see more steering, not more clearing and not steering. So I think looks trustworthy to me at this point. The eyewitness is you. Tell us a little bit about, first of all, how are you guys holding up? I know everybody's, a lot of people are praying for you. They're concerned. Friends about and pretty, family and hoping to be strong for him. The support around us is what I know keeping me together because if we didn't have all of our family, the minute 
I called my mom and she was up there in a matter of hours and same with the rest of our family. They were just up there Those around us. Yeah, luckily, we I, a few phone calls is all it took at first. And we had, just as Sheriff Davis said in the news, there was 175 plus people up there in the grid searches, volunteers, uh, professionals, and anybody I called, there's, the service up there is very here, here there, it's camping, you know? Um, we're, we're trying to hold up the best we can, but with, and we have hope yeah. is the thing. Hope is what keeps it going. Hope is because the search is not over, search is not done. Mm -hmm. We will find him. Yeah, no matter what. You were, you were, this is very unusual. Very, very unusual, sir. And we didn't hear people around us. We didn't see anybody. We have... Have you told them about the EMT bag? That needs to be addressed. Yeah, it, I know social media can be a good thing, but it can also that's, be a bad that's thing. The, we just don't want anything twisted. Yeah, we don't want to twist it. So clear up any rumors that you've seen or heard. We or need to, we've, we need that. One, one thing that we, we, we're, we're, me. we want to get to that. The, the, what's most of the biggest rumors that are going around is, I mean, I have heard everything from the, I mean, why you would make a rumor that has to do with a three-year-old is to, if you're not going to help, please don't, if it's not helpful. Yeah, just, it's, this, is a, this is a two, almost three-year-old we're talking about. Please help us. But I've heard everything from, um, I, am tr I am a truck driver. Um, I've heard everything from my company it won't let me come home off the road to look for my son. I was there the entire time and my employer, four hours after my son went missing, has been up there day and night, has not slowed down. Uh, and that, that, one that one bothered me and then it, they just came, they got worse and they got worse and they got worse. But there, that's a handful of bad with a bunch of good. The amount of support is very overwhelming and it's good. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, and just really one or maybe two things here. The emphatic way he says, please help us. That is not something I expect from somebody who's the perpetrator of a, of a crime. Uh, he, again, he, he grabs that melon again. Uh, he's really trying to control all this spurious thought that's going on when it isn't helpful and how clearly he says please help us and also just one last thing on this how supportive he is of the supporters again that's not something i would expect from somebody who's a perpetrator of, of the crime they want to find some way to <laughs> undercut the supporters and get them sent away sent home don't bother don't put your energy here put your energy somewhere else he's there going look my 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 boss my employer has been brilliant you know not only has he made sure as they should that i've got time to 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 look after my to go find my kid he's there he's with me right now he's come down as well he's he's in there on it uh, i mean uh, amazing um and not something i would expect to, to see from somebody who's involved in some criminality uh scott what do you got on this one all right when a child goes missing, one of the first things that the armchair detective at home is going to think is goes to is the parents did it because that's mainly what you see on YouTube. You see these videos again. I'll I'll say it where there's where we, we even we do it where we know the 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 people did it, and it's obvious. That's the most popular thing to talk about. It's what everybody wants to talk about. The look at these people who did this horrible thing. That that's one one of the reasons a lot of people are going to go to the guilt side on this. I think we need, again, I keep saying we need to be careful with this because we're not seeing any of the same cues and, and, and signs that let us know that indicate or suggest that these people have done anything. We're not seeing, like Chase was saying earlier, we're not seeing that, that sadness, that fake sadness come up and, oh, look at me, it's horrible. I'm, and bringing things back to themselves. Like, and I've just been doing not a whole lot of eye going on in there when it talks about, they're not talking about the pain they're feeling or that kind of thing. But most often, when, when we see people who, have, who are aware of what's happened to their child, they talk, they sure focus on that a lot. Going back to that one we talked about earlier and, and pretty much all the, the missing children we've seen so far, when they're, when, they've, when they're guilty for that, that's quite often what we see. So we don't see any of that here. No, look at me, oh, poor me, I'm having such a hard time. So you'll be empathetic with them and feel for them. We're not seeing any of that. This guy doesn't care about that. Could not possibly care less. He's like, I gotta find my son. We gotta help find. We gotta help find him. Whoever can help us, 
please come and help us. They don't look like drug users to me. They don't, he doesn't seem like that. He seems sharp, boom, right on the money. Very, he's got a lot of life in him and he's, he's, his volume is good. He's not uh, still, he's not wavering from anything. He's still loping along saying exactly what he thinks. They're not holding on to each other, They're not being real quiet and looking sad at each other. None of that. This does not look like, anyway, parents who know what's happened to that child. It looks like parents who are concerned about what's happened to that child. We can talk about the body language and talk about what we're seeing and all that, and it's all going to go back to most of it. It's going to go back to it doesn't look like anything's wrong here. It doesn't to me anyway. I'm not seeing anything deceptive so far. I just think they're concerned, and they're trying to find their son. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, we always say there's no such thing. At, there's no such thing as deceptive body language. Only indicators of stress. And so it's really easy to make a mistake and see some stress from a, a person who's gone through absolute hell for three days and assume that that lack of emotion that you expect, that overly dramatized emotion that you might expect. Parts of the country are different. Everything else. I think that if you've never been through a lot of loss, then you probably don't have anything in your head to put that too, that kind of adrenaline, that kind of, that kind of emotional wreck. And I know a lot of people will say, well, the kid's not dead. It's not the same as a kid. You don't know that you're terrified. And this is a child. This is a little bitty child. This is probably one of the hardest things most people do. And when they say, well, how could they possibly lose them? Do you know how many children get lost in department stores every year? The number is astronomical. So children are masterful at disappearing. So I, I don't jump to conclusions with folks like that. He's blasting facts. He's doing exactly what he does. He's clearing up this and that. He's saying this is a rumor, that's a rumor. He also hasn't pointed a lot of negative fingers at anyone. He does hear, and he doesn't really say this person did that or this person did that. He said, why would anybody want to start anything about a three-year-old child? Just come help us. To your point, Mark, he's asking for more resources on the ground, more people to come and scrutinize him. That's not usually what we see. We usually see, I left garbage in my trunk, so reason the trunk smell bad. Hmm. Well, that's the kind of thing that makes you go, okay, they're looking for excuses for why things happened, not the other way. She wanted to talk, but she holds it back. And you see her do a little mouth groom at one point. And then when she's actually asked directly, she does an intake breath before she gets ready to say what she's thinking and goes to that internal voice again. When we say internal voice, we're talking about, I'm thinking about what should I say? How should I say it? Not I'm thinking about what did I hear yesterday? And I'm going to give you two examples of that. I want you to think about one more time. I'm going to do this. I want you to think about your favorite song and just think of 10 or 12 words. Watch what your eyes do. It's going to be somewhere in your head. Some of us may go to emotion because it's meaningful and powerful. Most of us are going to go somewhere between our brow ridge and our cheekbone as we're processing sound on one side of our head or the other. Then when I want you to think about what would you do if you were in this situation, if you were these parents who are trying to tell you that they didn't have anything to do with their child missing and nobody believes them. Think about that for a couple of minutes. You'll go to emotion. Your eyes are going to drift down to your right, but you'll have to go to some internal conversation to think about how you would behave. And you'll see this in your own head. You carry the pattern for it. I don't see anything deceptive. I see people who are saying, come on, help us. Come on, get more resource. Get out there. We're going to go right back. Come and help us. That's what I got. Chase, what do you got? So Jessica is continuing to defer to him with these glances many times in this clip, which is well in her baseline. And when she's interrupted here by him, you'll see her bite her lip here. And this is common when somebody's interrupted often. It's common, a response to another person when they're often interrupted by that person. I'm imagining this happens all the time off camera. Not that he's a bad guy. That's just probably who he is. That's how he communicates. His hand to chest gesture as he's talking about being a truck driver is indicative of sincerity. And he keeps it there while talking uh, about how much his employer did for him. And the hand kind of sticks up there, just like the behavior Scott was talking about in the previous video, how the hand kind of sticks there. This helps us to identify that the brain is not regulating nonverbal communication. He's not managing appearances because the hand gets stuck. He's not concerned about what it looks like. This is a good indicator. When you see stuck body language because someone's so concerned about what they're saying and getting a point across, usually a very good sign. That's all I got. Uh, 
It's my yeah. best. It was the best. Don't get any better than that. If I don't win that, I can't win anything. I give it to you. The eyewitness is you. This is very unusual. Very, very unusual, sir. And we didn't hear people around us. We didn't see anybody. We have... Have you told them about the EMT bag? That needs to be addressed. Yeah, I know social media can be a good thing, but it can also that's, be a bad that's thing. The, we just don't want anything twisted. Yeah, we don't want to twist it. So clear up any rumors that you've seen or heard. We or need to, we've, we need to, we one, need to talk about that. One now. thing that we, we, concerned we're gonna, me. We want to get to that. The, the, what's most of the biggest rumors that are going around is, I mean, I have heard everything from the, I mean, why you would make a rumor that has to do with a three-year-old is to, if you're not going to help, please don't. If it's not helpful, yeah, it's, this is a this is a two almost three year old we're talking about. Please help us. But I've heard everything from um, I'm tr I am a truck driver. Um, I've heard everything from my company won't let me come home off the road to look for my son. I was there the entire time, and my employer, four hours after my son went missing, has been up there day and night, has not slowed down. Um, and that that one bothered that one bothered me, and then it, they just came, they got worse and they got worse and they got worse. But there, that's a handful of bad with a bunch of good. The amount of support is very overwhelming, and it's good. Are there any rumors that you've seen or anything you want to clear up, Jessica? I just somebody at the store, um, Ledor said it was one of the ladies that had worked at the store said that they saw um, a gentleman and a younger blonde boy matching our description of our son, really filthy, buying candy for him, and he was just bawling in a black truck. That is the only other- Here's the problem. Other, <coughs> My pickup truck's black. He drives a black truck. As a family, we went down to get, some, get a few things. So it earlier, it, it was, was earlier me, that but, it, day. but they claim it was at six o'clock that, uh, that evening, and I, we was, so were search and rescue, until what a quarter to four? Yeah, from we didn't ever, we never we haven't left the camp since one o'clock that afternoon. So it's just a lot of hearsay, and was anybody camping around you? That we don't know is I come to find I didn't know the area, and I didn't know I there's it's very open, but you can't see much. There's a, a, a road that goes up and along the top. By we're we're camped underneath the reservoir, basically right below it. And you can go up above the reservoir, and I didn't even know the road was, did, I didn't know the road was up there. And as I traveled up there myself, I come to find out I can see everything going on in that campsite, but you can't see out. You can't see up, you can't see around, and if anybody comes to the bottom of your campground, you can't even see who they are. So they could have come to your camp. They could have came in, and you could never, never know it. And with the water was not very, it was not a fast running, it's a crick, but it is quite loud moving through the logs and things like that. So hearing range is not all that far either. So if you couldn't hear anybody coming up either. So all right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, Chase, I love the fact you had the stranded body language because it's left there. And if you don't know that, if you don't know it's left over and you just came in here, you see him starting to adapt, you're probably going to go, okay, he's lying. He's adapting. He's protecting his heart. People will give you all kinds of things. If you go look at the armchair detective, Scott, to your point, some of these body language guys are going to go, that's the ultimate in protection. He's got his hand over his heart and he's massaging himself. Well, no, I think it's one of those things. His hand is abandoned and he's like, uh, so he starts to adapt. That's not... If a guy is trying to hide something, that's probably not the way he's going to do it. Hand to groin, maybe, but not the other way. Um, so it, it would get your attention. There's her ankle movement when she's divulging information herself, proving that what we said all along is when she's delivering information or wants to, her, her foot bounces. So I would pay attention to that in an interrogation. I'd ask her question, and I would go after it. And then you say... Here, here's where we get to a person when they're talking about hearsay and you start to see him get really uncomfortable. He has a short swallow that is holding back emotion. If you watch, it's kind of a throat quiver. You'll see that sometimes in people before their chin boss that Chase always talks about engages. You'll see that throat quiver and you'll see it here. But the questioner doesn't let him keep talking. You see a do a little short kind of things there. But the questioner interrupts him and doesn't let him keep talking or we might have gotten emotion out of him. And I, I, I don't know that we can tell you enough times that baseline is important and what a person does is deviation from that is what matters. But that's everything we're seeing here. We're starting to see a thing that changes. You see her eyes expand. She reaches for her neck. 
as she st- as he's talking about you being able to see down into the into the place but not out and the sound that makes me starting to think okay is there something happening between them between the two of them mark to your point losing a child is the most powerful thing that can happen to you in your life and th- it causes all kinds of fractures because of blaming whether it's external or internal whether people are saying what they're thinking or not so seeing that as she talks about him talking about he didn't realize that you could get in from the top and you could see down in there and you couldn't hear who was coming i think i start to say hmm, let's pay really close attention to the dynamic between them as the years unfold uh scott what do you got all right his hand is in that odd position it was where it was earlier and it stayed there because he doesn't realize it's there it's almost frozen at that point, again, because he's so focused on what's going on up here and trying to get that information out in the right way. That's what that's where that's where his head's at. It's focused on that. It, it sort of doesn't let anything go. Her foot's in that slow spin because she's getting that she's getting rid of that built up stress and energy. And he explains as he's explaining the, the situation um, with the truck and the surrounding of the campsite and all that. His eyes aren't checking that interviewer to make sure he's being believed he's making sure that he understands what he's saying that he's getting the information because if this guy doesn't get it the people watching won't get it either so i think he's he's really focused on that uh she's almost zombie like that stare she's got going on because i'm sure she's as he's talking she's thinking some other things as well and trying to stay calm because of the situation so i i i think that's what that is some people say she's she looks like a zombie. I think she kind of does because she's probably been up for a long time and she's been worried and she's really, really stressed. So I think that's what's happening. Her head movements are smooth and they're fluid. Her vocal tone is still strong and her cadence is medium, but it's not too fast. Again, we're not seeing that that sadness for each other in the crying we've seen, seen in some of our videos because I think we're, we're, we're not seeing any anything fake here up to now. All right, Chase, what do you got? Yeah, there's, I don't have a whole lot for this one, but we're seeing a lot more of the same here. And his admissions here that you're hearing are not, a, some people might make this mistake. He's not deliberately introducing ambiguity in this. Instead, what I think we're seeing here is explanation of ambiguity. He's not in, inducing it. He's explaining ambiguity. And I think that's a huge uh, differentiation point that that needs to be made for this, just not just for the video, but for your education. That's one of the reasons you subscribe to our channel is to learn this stuff. So explaining ambiguity is different than injecting it into the story. Mark? Yeah, totally agree. So first thing I absolutely agree with is, is the stuck hand there. It would be easy for somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about to see that as a barrier gesture miss the self-soothe which is very very small in there that happens after a while as well so absolutely it's not a barrier gesture it's a freeze it's it's locked in there um also um just great descriptors descriptor gestures of the geography the topography of the location and also to uh, elucidate to shine a light on look we need to be looking down here I would expect a perpetrator to start going out of frame with stuff lots of shove away gestures lots of stuff we can't see we don't know because we don't know what was happening over there you can't see what's happening here we need to be able to go look and search out more to get people away from where the crime may have happened he's putting the focus in there and trying to shine a, a brighter light on it just nothing that i would expect with some from, from somebody who may have some guilt or, or even guilty knowledge uh in this as well so looking good to me i think we may have a three-way tie there <laughs> the eyewitness is you are there any rumors that you've seen anything you want to clear up jessica i just Somebody at the store um, in Lador said, it was one of the ladies that had worked at the store, said that they saw um, a gentleman and a younger blonde boy matching our description of our son, really filthy, buying candy for him, and he was just bawling in a black truck. That is the only other... Here's the problem. Other, <clears throat> My pickup truck's black. He drives a black truck. As a family, we went down to get some, get a few things. 
So it could have been earlier. It, it was, was earlier May, that but it, day. But they claim it was at six o'clock that uh, that evening, and I we was so we search and rescue until what a quarter to four. Yeah, from we okay. didn't we never, we haven't left the camp since one o'clock that afternoon. So it's just a lot of hearsay, and. Was anybody camping around you? That we don't know is, I come to find, I didn't know the area. And I didn't know, I, there's, it's very open, but you can't see much. There's a, a, a road that goes up and along the top, by, I, we're, we're camped underneath the reservoir, basically right below it. And you can go up above the reservoir and I didn't even know the road was, did, I didn't know the road was up there. And as I traveled up there myself, I come to find out, I can see everything going on in that campsite, but you can't see out. You can't see up, you can't see around, and if anybody comes to the bottom of your campground, you can't even see who they are. So they could have come into your They could have came in know. and you could not never, never know it. And with the water was not very, it was not a fast running, it's a creek, but it is quite loud moving through the logs and things like that. So hearing range is not all that far either. So if you couldn't hear anybody coming up either. So um, we, we, we were just, yeah, we decided we we're gonna go a little exploring. He was gonna be good with grandpa by the campfire. We were more than, Probably 50, 50 yards away in 10 minutes. Uh, well, but the time we, I seen him to the point I figured out he was gone. And I come back up in the creek and I actually seen, there were some things down by the a little minnows that I thought he would just love. So when I come back up to get him and I yelled over to grandpa, uh, where is, you know, where's little Dior? He immediately shocked. He says, I thought he came up to you because it's such a small area. That's what a lot of people they don't understand is they just assume how could you let your kid out of your sight. This area is pretty well blocked in and you can see you could there's no way you couldn't not see him in what we thought and in just in a split second your whole world is upside down and vanished. There's not a trace found. That's the other reason why this has been called on the news as a suspension because it is not a suspension, but there's not a single trace of him. This, this child loses stuff. He's, he's two, almost three. Anybody who has a child in that age range knows. He leave, they leave trails, they lose stuff, they... She was no, Nothing. Anything. There's just nothing. And that's where we're starting to move is there's, my, there's a possibility that he may be with somebody and that's what's giving us hope that it's, it's a bad thing that he will be not with us right now, but it also means that there is a good chance that he is alive and with somebody. So we are drying every aspect we can, any aspect we can. Is that what your gut tells you? All right, Chase, what do you got? This right here is a deviation from baseline. So let's isolate these a little bit. Let's talk about Jessica first. And you guys will probably expand and, and see even more than this. There's an increase in social confirmation glances to the interviewer, back and forth confirmation glances. Comfort injecting information while he's talking, interrupting him. There's a drastic increase in her eye contract or contact to Vernal, I think is his name. There's back and forth confirmation glances to the reporter. There's a sharp increase in blink rate at the moment that he's discussing coming back from the creek. Then we see rapid head movement, this rapid tracking of, of the chin looking to different targets or threats between Vernal and the interviewer. And there's a sharp increase in breathing rate and a shift in breathing location from where it used to be abdominal breathing, which is relaxed, to chest breathing, which is more associated with stress. In Vernal, one thing we know is he has got a baseline of direct, smooth flowing speech. So let's spot the points here where there's a total loss of fluency. Minnows by the creek yelling to grandpa about his son, vanished. The word just vanished with no words around it. Doesn't describe how anything vanished, just the word vanished by itself. Something is very off here. There's something about this critical moment that I don't think is honest. And I'm not saying they're guilty, but something about this story sends both of their behavior off the deep end for me. Uh, and the behavioral spikes are precisely at these moments, these critical moments of the story. Uh, Scott, what do you got? Uh, I, th I think what's happening there is they're getting nervous because they're reliving that part where he came up and talked, where he talked to the grandfather. Maybe that's what the problem is there, because I, I, I couldn't figure out what was going on at that at that section, and I think that's what's happening there, because outside there, there are so many. You just covered everything that I. Had. <laughs> So everything you're right. Everything is 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 
has everything's changed there. But I think it's because I went back to the part where it's because I believe it's his grandfather um, talking about that, the shock, because he talks about the shock that happened when uh, when that came up. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, well, here's something that does fit for me. Uh, alive and with somebody. Clear baton gestures on that. Um, illustrators that just enforce this and hold this idea down. It's just a strong sense of, of hope for alive and with somebody which suggests that there is a perpetrator out there. This isn't, Chase, as you often talk about, a case of the missing perpetrator. There is an idea of somebody out there and the hope of being alive. Again, this is not what I expect from somebody who is a perpetrator or is trying to hide something uh, nefarious. Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I agree with you. His his body language, his narration, as you would call it, Chase, his illustrators, his punctuation with his hands are good when he's telling. There are a couple of things, and he does lose fluency. He does change. There's a fundamental shift there that makes you red flag. Uh, let's walk through the mechanics of these just for a second. When they first start talking, he says 50 yards. She says 10 minutes. This tells you how their brains work and complement each other. He's telling you details because that's what he does. He starts off doing this the same way he's done everything else. Bam, it's 50 yards. There are four dogs. Whatever he's going to tell you, he's going to give you that. He's a small chunker. She's a bigger chunker. She puts it in terms of how long it would take to walk back because that for her is what's important about her child missing. Again, people lose kids in department stores, so I'm not surprised you can lose a kid outside. But there's congruent message telling, and he, he's doing most of it okay. He does alive and with somebody. Every aspect up to that, there is pretty fluid. I think where he loses fluency is when he realizes that doesn't sound good for me to say, I hope my kid's with somebody else. And then he backpedals like all hell and starts to edit in his mind. And I think that's where he loses the where he loses this ability. Now, I also agree with you, Chase, when he comes up and he's talking about seeing these people, you see his respiration go up when he's talking about the minnows. He also does a downright eye accessing. Look, we have no idea what's in this guy's head about whether he trusts the two people who were in that, the two other people who were there or not. So we don't know what could cause it. We just see that there's something changing. And then he does an eye block. At, this child loses stuff. He's two, almost three. He shakes his head. And he kind of drops his, his face goes slack. And that's kind of dismissing people who don't understand this is a child. This is a child. He would lose things. We would see it. It's not like he dropped things. But what they're saying, in effect, is he would leave a breadcrumb trail wherever he went because he's not a five-year-old who thinks about his stuff as valuable. And we'll hear later, he did leave a couple of things. I think there's some fear of being, being misunderstood. And all, we all know that that fear of being misunderstood when you say with somebody else could cause your baseline to ramp, your respiration to increase, all these things we're talking about. So I'm going to give him benefit of a doubt here and let's see what he does next. That's what I got. Okay, Mark. Uh, you sold that one. You can't you can't beat that stuff. You can't. Okay. I oversell, I don't win. <laughs> I undersell. You don't care. <laughs> Go f yourself. <laughs> I think the judge is partial. <laughs> the eyewitness is you. Um, we 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 were just yeah we decided we we're gonna go a little exploring. He was gonna be good with Grandpa by the campfire. We were at more than probably ten fifty minutes. fifty yeah. yards away in ten minutes. Uh, well, but the time we I seen him to the point I figured out he was gone, and I come back up in the creek and I actually seen there were some things down by the little minnows and I thought he would just love. So when I come back up to get him and I yelled over to grandpa, uh, where is, you know, where's little Dior? He immediately shocked. He says, I th he came up to you because it's such a small area. That's what a lot of people, they don't understand is they just assume, how could you let your kid out of your sight? This area is pretty well blocked in and you can see, you could, there's no way you couldn't not see him in what we thought. And in just in a split second, your whole world is upside down and vanished. There's not a trace found. That's the other reason why this has been called on the news as a suspension, because it is not a suspension, but there's not a single trace of him. This, this child loses stuff. He's, he's two, almost three. Anybody who has a child in that age range knows. He leave, they leave trails, they lose stuff, they... She was no, Nothing. Anything. There's just nothing. And that's where we're starting to move is 
there's might there's a possibility that he may be with somebody and that's what's giving us hope that it's it's a bad thing that he will be not with us right now but it also means that there is a good chance that he is alive and with somebody so we are trying every aspect we can any aspect we can is that what your gut tells do you plan to maybe hold a vigil down here? I guess you maybe haven't even thought about it. Or kind of, a, do you want the community in Idaho Falls to, to rally? I mean, I know they don't want a lot of people going up That's there. what we're not real sure. Um, I don't, yet again, as a father who's very concerned with the whole family, we'll tell you yes. If we can get the whole state of Idaho up there, we would love to. But in such a small area that has been combed and combed and combed, something may have been missed, but I don't know I've been trying. I'm going to be getting with the Lima High County Sheriff and Snake River, or sorry, the Salmon uh, Snake and Rip, Salmon Search, Search and Rescue, rescue. Uh, to see what their thoughts on everything is. And trust me, with such a small area, 175 people, there was nowhere to park, nowhere to walk. There was grid searches up from one, and that's, there's ridges on one side of you and the other, and they're not very far apart. And there was all searched all the way down to the bottom, all the way the above above the reservoir. The reservoir itself, I don't, a lot, a lot of people know the place. The reservoir itself isn't, but maybe a few feet deep. You can see, if you're up on top, you can see the bottom of the center. If you're looking at the middle of the reservoir, you can see the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. So everything has been 100% thoroughly checked, but I, nobody can guarantee me 100%, so I'm gonna keep looking. We'll continue to look until he's found. We don't care how long it takes. We, and we think as many people that have shared the story and continue to share his pictures and things like that. If somebody has him, they'll eventually somebody bring him will back. come forward wondering they, where this child has come from. With some sort of and this that may not be the case, but it's it could be. So that's why we're trying to look at this aspect as well. And you want all right, Mark? What do you got? Yeah, look, really simple. They're accepting mass help. <laughs> They're going look, bring bring more bring more people. We've 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 gone through with a fine tooth comb, but more people, the whole state, come on down. Uh, look until he's found. We don't care how long it takes. Someone will come forward. Both of them are hopeful and open rather than pessimistic and closed. And hopeful and open uh, to help is exactly what I would expect from two parents who are desperately wanting to see their child again and don't know what's happened. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? Uh, I'm going, to, I'm not going to have much because I'm going back to what I've been saying. Everything looks as it should. He stumbles on that, the name of the rescue team or whatever, but that's, that's normal. He's not concerned with them. They're there. They're doing what they're supposed to be. He had, probably hadn't thought about the name of it since he first said it. I, I think everything looks the way it should. So I'm not going to waste our time and go, ah, oh, tell details that I've already gone over. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I think there's a reason that he loses those words. In the very beginning, when they ask him this vigil question, well, a vigil is something you do later. It's not something you do to say, kumbaya, kumbaya, stand around. Hey, well, people are looking for my kids. And there's a look of dismissal in his face when he does that. He eye breaks down to his right, which is emotion. When we look over this way, we're typically emotional. The backs of his mouth, the sides of his mouth draw back in disapproval. He's pretty much saying, What? And I think then his feelings start to override his thinking and he starts to stammer through all these facts he was going to spit out because that's who he is. Then once he gets back on topic and he's back to his words, his illustrators come up and he's doing exactly what he's done every up until now. I think it's just because he was in a place where he was emotional and it's starting to rise and he lost that. When she starts talking, his eyes drop back down into his right while she's talking and he's emotionally accessing over there over something we can't tell what that's not what we do we can see the symptoms chase what do you got yeah i think we're back to baseline here and we're indicating a little bit more comfortable behavior but if you've been subscribed to us for a while i bet you saw something here because you've been watching these videos and you got the training the only deviation here is in the ending of this clip when Jessica says that somebody's going to come forward with the information. There's a lip retraction. And this typically indicates that this is when the lips go into the mouth. Typically indicates that someone needs reassurance. So just as a quick bumper sticker quote for this, the lips squeeze to withhold and they withdraw to get reassurance. They go into the mouth to get reassurance. 
But I don't think that has anything to do with guilt or innocence. I think she genuinely needed the reassurance there. That's all I got. Okay, Chase. You oh, no, no, I'm giving it to you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not just giving it to you. You won that one. All right. I did the old mind meld. Yeah. Feel good spark. about it. The classic spark. An oldie, but a goodie. The eyewitness is you. Do you plan to maybe hold a vigil down here? I guess you maybe haven't even thought about it. Or kind of a, do you want the community in Idaho Falls to, to rally? I mean, I know they don't want a lot of people going up That's there. what we're not real sure. Um, I don't, yet again, as a father who's very concerned with the whole family, we'll tell you yes. If we can get the whole state of Idaho up there, we would love to. But in such a small area that has been combed and combed and combed, something may have been missed. But I don't know. I've been trying. I'm going to be getting with the uh, Lima High County Sheriff and Snake River. Or, sorry, the Salmon uh, Snake and Ri Salmon Search, Search and Rescue, and rescue. Uh, to see what their thoughts on everything is. And trust me, with such a small area, 175 people, there was nowhere to park, nowhere to walk. There was grid searches up from one, and that's, there's ridges on one side of you and the other, and they're not very far apart. And it was all searched, all the way down to the bottom, all the way the below, above the reservoir. The reservoir itself, I don't, a lot, a lot of people know the place. The reservoir itself isn't, but maybe a few feet deep. You can see, if you're up on top, you can see the bottom of the center. If you're looking at the middle of the reservoir, you can see the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. So everything has been 100% thoroughly checked, but I, nobody can guarantee me 100%, so I'm gonna keep looking. We'll continue to look until he's found. We don't care how long it takes. We, and we think as many people that have shared the story and continue to share his pictures and things like that, if somebody has him, they'll eventually Somebody bring will back. come forward wondering they, where this child will has come, come from. With some sort of and this That may not be the case, but it's, it could be. So that's why we're trying to look at this aspect as well. And you want to tell me about the blanket. This is his blanket. He doesn't go anywhere without his blanket, his cup, or his monkey. And all three of them were left at the campground. And no, he since will, he... All three has to be with him. Yes. He will trip over them if he has to, but they are going with him. And this is the first time since he's been born, pretty much, that he's been without these things. Yeah. And that's why you meant another reason... Why another reason why we're job. wondering. Yes, because and that's this is the blanket seem... that we brought him home in from the hospital. This is his... This is what comforts him any and all times. Um, this is an exact replica of a security blanket for everybody. Mm -hmm. This is his actual blanket. He yes. does not go anywhere without it. That's our another our other concern of why. Yeah. What and would I, you, should 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 he, he be out there and happen to see this? What would you say? We're looking for you, son, and we will find you. And we love you more than anything in the world. You have a lot of people who love you and are looking for you. Buddy will find you. We'll Daddy will find you. looking until we get you home. I've got a two-year-old, and you guys have been all in front of the past two days. Is there anything you want to add, anything we didn't get to? Just if somebody has him, please don't hurt him. Just bring him home safely to us. No matter what it where takes. Where he belongs. Even if you have to just leave him at a store where somebody else will see him and bring him home safely to us. I don't... Just yeah, just drop him off somewhere and if where that's not the case, somebody is at so that they can see him and bring him home. And if that may not be the case, I'm, we will search for you and search for you and search for you until we find you. No matter how long it takes, no matter what we got to overcome, we will find you, son. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is a great opportunity to see what baseline is for him because he spouts something that makes absolutely no sense. And it's a fact. It's a way for him to have some kind of marked status. As he says, this is an exact replica of a security blanket. That's not what he really means. He's just using words in a way that make him appear to be more powerful with words. I think it's what we see over and over and over. So this is part of the reason I think, eh, oh, that's baseline. No big deal. Uh, the first time he breaks is here. And by that, I mean emotionally. And we see if we go all the way back to when he was asking the guy asked him a question earlier. And I said, you could see his throat start to quiver a little before his chin boss. He starts that. And then we see that chin engage. And then he does modified lip grip kind of, of that emotional control. We always say, Chase, you just said it when you withdraw, when you 
grip your lips, you're controlling or containing something. A lot of times it's emotion. Then he gets, he takes it very figure, very literally when the guy says, what would you say to your child? He only talks to his child. Daddy will find you. And then you see real tears, that throat quiver, that chin boss, and he's got a snotty nose. That's a hard one to fake. This guy's got a one track mind about what he's supposed to do. Even when she goes to talk to, if you have him, he goes right back to saying, nope, I'm talking to my kid. And they both talk in present tense, which is a really good indicator. We all know a lot of times you find something else. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So look, when when we were playing back that um, video for ourselves, we didn't play the bit where he breaks down uh, crying. You know, often you've probably seen us coming off tapes of people uh, doing crying where you'll notice that we're laughing. Uh, and that's usually because we're going, yeah, that isn't. That isn't what crying actually looks like. Doesn't look anything like that. And what's happened is it hasn't triggered any sense of empathy in us. What it's done is to trigger a sense of comedy in it because it, in us because it's so absurd. Often what they're doing, uh, what you just saw in in that image is somebody really crying. That's what grief looks like. You can tell because there's no warning signals that it's coming. There's no really perceptible warning signals. It ramps up really fast instead of just starting and having some warning signals. And then like, here's my grief. It, it, it comes in slow and then ramps up really quick. And then you'll notice how he doesn't try and take control over it in any way because he can't. He doesn't even know it's happening until he's well, it's well into it. And that's why you don't see him hiding his face. You don't see him doing any images of, um, of eye blocking during that. You will see the eyes drop, uh, but that's defeat. I think, which is which is sad to sad to see. So my question for you would be: Look, watch it, and was your empathy triggered? Um, I would guess the majority of you out there would say, "Yeah, absolutely, my empathy was triggered." Why? Because you're hum human beings, and you're seeing a real emotion, and you're designed to have empathy for that. Chase, what do you got on this one? In you know, the, in this video, the optimism stays present and the emotion appears to be genuine in both of them, like you guys are saying here. And the level of comfort and overall lack of stress around talking about that blanket and other belongings is indicative of innocence to me and genuine desire to instill a connection to him, the, the child in the interviewer. One thing you'll notice when videos come out like this, you'll see parents either trying to get you to identify with them or you'll try, they'll try to get you to identify with the missing person to humanize the missing person instead of humanizing themselves and telling you how stressful it's been and how innocent they are. They humanize the missing person. And that's what we're seeing here. And that is a, a pretty good indicator. Just another indicator to layer onto the all all the ones that you guys have identified. That's all I got. Who am I miss? <laughs> <laughs> Scott, what do you got? Oh shoot, here I am laughing. It's the most serious one. Sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just I'll I'll just finish up with what you guys said. The emotion we're seeing is real. This is tough. And you're right, Mark. He doesn't see it coming. He's not ready for it. He's not he's not pretending to be, to do that. It's real. They're worried. They're stressed. This is this is all this is the way it should look. It's not the that hanging on each other crying and I did this and I feel like this and I've been a wreck and I, we don't hear any of that. All we're seeing is them worried about their child. And I believe they're on the impression that he's still around. But I think they really believe, you know, if he's alive, that he's still around, whether somebody grabbed him or, or whatever happened to him. We have no earthly idea. The eyewitness is you. Tell me about the blanket. This is his blanket. He doesn't go anywhere without his blanket, his cup or his monkey. And all three of them were left at the campground. And now he since will, he all three has to be with him, yes. he will trip over them if he has to. But they are going with him. And this is the first time 
since he's been born, pretty much, he hasn't been without these things. Yeah. And that's why you another reason. Why another you reason why we're wondering. Yes, because and that's this is the blanket seem... that we brought him home in from the hospital. This is his, this is what comforts him any and all times. Um, this is an exact replica of a security blanket for everybody. Mm -hmm. This is his actual blanket. He yes. does not go anywhere without it. That's our another our other concern of why. Yeah. What and I you, should should. Should he, he be out there and happen to see this, what would you say? We're looking for you, son, and we will find you. And we love you more than anything in the world. You have a lot of people who love you and are looking for you. Buddy will find you. We'll Daddy will find you. We'll never stop looking until we get you a home. I've got a two-year-old, and you guys have been all I've thought about the past two days. Is there anything you want to add, anything we didn't get to? Just if somebody has him, please. Don't hurt him. Just bring him home safely to us. No matter what it where takes. Where he belongs. Even if you have to just leave him at a store where somebody else will see him and bring him home safely to us. I know. Just drop him off somewhere. Yeah, just drop him off somewhere and if where that's not the case, somebody is at so that they can see him and bring him home. And if that may not be the case, I'm, we will search for you and search for you and search for you until we find you. No matter how long it takes, no matter what we got to overcome, we will find you, son. All right, Mark, what are you seeing up to this point? But this is very like that Australian couple uh, that we saw way back who'd who'd lost their child, and we all said, "Look, if you're focusing on this 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 couple, you're focusing in the wrong place." And the child was found elsewhere. Chase had the profile of the of the perpetrator there, spot on similar situation it, for me if you are focusing on this couple you are absolutely going down the wrong route i know it probably feels so true to you that there's something going on here i'm telling you there absolutely isn't uh, chase what are you seeing till now yeah and at the time of the filming and these videos it looks like the parents seem to genuinely not know their son's whereabouts i will say that it appears they genuinely don't know his whereabouts in my opinion, there's something interesting about their stories, even in the other videos to to date. So after, you know, they got divorced, they continue to refer to each other's innocence in terms of opinion. And all these other videos, Jessica would say, quote, I think I quote, I believe in both of our innocence. And Vernal would say, in my opinion, yes, she is innocent. So their innocence was about opinion. I thought that was interesting. I did believe if I, all I had to go on as a profiler was this, I can't ask them questions. I think uh, this is probably the wrong place to focus, but I think there's something missing. Something about that story is off for me. And God bless that little kid. I hope he's okay somewhere and I hope he gets returned. Greg? Yeah, what I'm seeing is exactly that. There are some things that make you wonder, hmm, why does a person behave this way? But nothing that's a giant red flag. This is mostly as it's supposed to be. When people lose a child, they're going to feel guilt, just period. It's part of what destroys the relationship, Mark, that you point to. Because if I can't express that guilt for that child being missing in a way that's meaningful for me to be able to get past it, then somebody else has to take the blame. And often people point to each other and go at each other. We're not seeing that. We're not seeing any interaction. We're not seeing maybe it was this guy, maybe it was that guy. We're hearing, help me find this kid, which is what you would think at three days. He's very meticulous in driving these details and saying, we've got all this resource and all this going on. We will still take more. We want every stone turned. So when I see that, I think I agree with Mark. It's hard to get a guy who just did something to his kid and disappeared his kid to want to bring more people yeah. in. Maybe he's suspicious of the other people that are camping with him. And maybe that plays out long term chase. We'll never know. But we just got to figure it out based on this video alone. That's what we see. Scott, what are you seeing? So far, here's the way it looks to me. This the child, if he goes everywhere and he has the blanket and the other things with him, some someone or something snatched this kid. Something he's gone. Obviously, something happened to him. So it's either a person or an animal has got him. I know there's a lot of water there, and he says you can see in the bottom of it and all that. But we're all the time seeing these videos where people are finding cars in the bottom of these lakes that have already been. They've looked in there and they've they've gone over it. And these guys go in and like, hey, we found this car you're looking for. So maybe he's in the water. 
Maybe he got in there and just fell in and is under something. I don't I don't know, but he's gone, obviously. So something's happened to him. So from a logic uh, perspective, somebody, either somebody knows what happened to him because somebody took him or nobody knows what happened to him because something like an animal or something snatched him. But he's definitely been snatched because he wasn't coaxed away because he didn't take his stuff with him. Then when they're saying, come here, little kid, like sometimes in, in, in malls, what was the big thing to do when they would sm- snatch people as someone would stand by the door behind the door and they'd have a little kid near the exit door and he'd be waving at a girl and he'd be telling her to come over a little cute little kid. And when the girl got close enough, the door would open up and they'd grab him and they'd, they'd run with him. They'd snatch him out of the mall that way. So, and sometimes it still happens in those near, near gas stations and, and those situations. But in this situation, there was no, there, apparently there's no coaxing the kid because he would have said, oh, hang on a second, I'll be right with you. I had to get my stuff. However, kids say that. But, he, but his stuff was still there. So I think somebody snatched him or an animal got him. And maybe he's in that water. That's what I, I can't stop thinking about the water part. Maybe he's falling in there. All right. I think this is good, fellas, and we'll see you next time. See ya. So what do you got?